Good morning, Tech Knights. And now, friends from the class of 1988, welcome an award-winning journalist, former news anchor, and five-time Emmy nominee, Janine Aguirre Ramirez. Tech Knights, welcome home. No other school gives you all welcome home like Brooklyn Tech. The Brooklyn Tech Alumni Association Foundation is pleased to welcome you with the Brooklyn Tech uh, 2023 homecoming celebration. We had a cruise last night and you're all in the building here today. Welcome back home. I am thrilled to kick off today's celebration. Please draw your attention to the aisle as we welcome some of our retired and current Brooklyn Technical High School faculty. And now, please welcome alumni celebrating 50 or more years as tech alumni, the Tech Knight Diamond Club. And please also welcome our 50th anniversary alumni from the class year of 1973. <laughs> okay, everybody please be seated. We're about to welcome the Brooklyn Tech Color Guard. Please take the stage. Okay, if everybody could get into place and please rise for the national anthem. From the class of 2023, here's Yang Chen Lamo. Oh, say can you see early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming who 
whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we'd watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Again, I would like to welcome our 50th anniversary alumni from the class of 1973. And you may all sit. We have a special treat to sing, live, lift every voice and sing a song of praise and hope. We are thrilled to welcome a current student from this year's graduating class, Ashley Webster. has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the on till victory is won. Beautiful. Beautiful, and I heard so many of you singing along. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome back to this incredible historic auditorium, one of the largest in the city. There are many decades gathered here. Lots of class years and affinity groups are represented, reuniting. And this auditorium means a great deal to me. I spent a lot of time on this stage. I performed here my high school musicals under, under the great, late Susan Palmieri, which she led the drama club under the musical talent of Mr. Jim DiBenedetto, who's in the house tonight. And Saul Reimer, who did the stage works. We did Bye Bye Birdie, we did The Music Man, we had so many great memories. And they're special indeed. And the current production right now, we're gonna be transported to a castle setting 
for the hilarious musical retelling of the classic tale, The Princess and the Pea. Under the direction of Mr. Edwin Velasquez, director of the Spring Musical, an alum of the class of 1990, and musical director Deshaun Withers, class of 2000. Here is the uh, cast of Once Upon a Mattress. Okay, we're just making sure everybody <laughs> is seated before we bring on the cast. This is the 50th anniversary, is the 50th anniversary class, which we welcome once again. And for those of you who were on the cruise last night, what a great turnout. You guys know how to party. <laughs> what a great introduction that was to the whole uh, homecoming celebrations. And it was the second year. I, um, and my understanding is it's gonna be a third year. So make sure to, uh, to include that next year uh, for your homecoming celebrations on the Friday night before the Saturday. Program. Okay, and there's extra seats in the front if you want to come down and sit in the front as well. There's a lot of us. <laughs> we just keep coming in. <laughs> This is a great turnout from the 50th anniversary class. <laughs> of course, I have a special shout out to my class of 88 <laughs> in the house. <laughs> Okay, take all available seats. We're gonna about to dim the lights. Okay, once again, here's the cast of Once Upon a Mattress, this year's Spring Musical.
the way, I don't think I ever told you. My full name is Winifred the Woebegone, but Winifred's too formal. You can call me by my nickname. Winnie? Fred. Fred. Oh, what a beautiful name. So straight, so strong, so you. I like you, Fred. I like you. You're just saying those words to be kind. No, I mean it. I like. I mean, I love you, Fred. He is out of his medieval mind. I'm perfectly sane and sound. I never felt better in my life. Everybody, everybody, everybody come and meet my incipient wife. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. My read must be clear. When she shows you all how strong she is, you'll stand right up and cheer. The F and a car and a D and a D and an F R E D Fred. Yeah. It's like a lord, so come sing a merry drinking song and let the wine be poured. Fill the bowl to overflowing, raise the goblet high. With an F and an R and a E and a D and an F R E D Fred. Yeah. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She sings. Just like a bird, you'll be left completely stained. Just warn her gentle voice is hard. <laughs> Fill the bowl to overflowing, raise the goblet high. With an F and a an R and an E and a D and an F R E D Fred. Yeah, I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She reads just like a Greek. You will clap your hands and wonder at her fabulous technique. I'm in love with a girl named Fred. She dances with this grace. You are bound to sing her praises till you are purple in the face. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo, bravo, bravissimo.
Well, that was wonderful, and you must see the production. It's running from March 30th to April 1st. And break a leg, my fellow drama students. I had the great pleasure of being the co-host of Brooklyn Tech Centennial Gala in the fall, and it was an outstanding event in Manhattan. Here to welcome us and provide an update is the president of the Brooklyn Tech Alumni Association and proud alum of the class of 1983 celebrating their 40th, <laughs> Denise Clark Ware. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shanine. You have been so amazing to us and incredibly generous with your time and talent and so much tech love. And got us MC Milk D last night for the party. That was a great time. Thank you. Good morning, my fellow tech knights and friends. We had another fabulous Centennial Reunion cruise around the iconic New York Harbor, nearly 400 in attendance, and I'm happy to report that the 100th graduating class of 1983 can still party like it's 1999. Now we'll be passing around the icy hot a little bit later. <laughs> But a great time was had by all the class years. So welcome, especially to those celebrating milestones. And you know, we are so tech proud that you're with us. Today, we have over 650 registrants. So thank you all for making both last night and today a memorable centennial experience. Thank you. As the Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation celebrates its 40th year, it certainly has been an honor to serve as the president of the board of directors. But it's really been a distinct privilege to preside through our centennial celebration, 100 years. A time marking the incredible legacy of our alma mater, recognizing the opportunity to evolve and grow, and to answer the call for new direction in this organization. That includes the hiring of our new executive director, Courtney, Courtney Ulrich from the class of 90, who you'll hear from shortly, and certainly my fellow board members. So with that, I am pleased to recognize those who are on this journey together, starting with our founders, Dr. Matthew Mandry, Achilles Perry, and Michael Weiss, and I believe they're all in the front row here. Okay, my lights. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna call the rest of our board members and I'll have you uh, wait to the end to applaud, but what I'd love to do is have a little bit of the house lights. I think they're all in this first row and they're so incredible. I would just love you all to see them and, and thank them with me. So if we can do that, I'd appreciate it. Um, Vice President David Lee, class of 78, if you'll please stand. Vice President Bola Oyediju, class of 92, if you'll stand. My other Vice President, Anthony Sharippa, class of 67, couldn't be here today, but he sends his regards. Our Treasurer, James De Benedetto, class of 71, known to you all as Debo. Our Secretary, Ned Steele, class of 68, who is also our editor-in-chief of the Tech Times magazine. I know many of you see that. He does a fabulous job with that. John Albert, class of 90. Wilton Sedano, class of 82. Horace Davis, class of 84. <laughs> Thomas Hernandez, class of 73, the 50th graduating class. And Tom is also serving us as the chair of this year's centennial celebration. Leslie Irish Underwood, class of 82. Penelope Coconidis, class of 87. Amy Kong, class of 99. Edward LaGrassa, class of 65. Salvatore Lentini, class of 79. Achilles Perry, class of 58. Valmira Papanara, class of 18. 
Deep D. Sharma, class of 04, and my class of 1983 classmate, Margaret Murphy. <laughs> Margaret is also um, taking on cheering uh, the, well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that, but she's also gonna take on cheering Ruby Engineers. Michael Weiss, class of 57. Giselle Williams, class of 92. And our honorary director who is not here, but this auditorium is named for him, Leonard Riggio, 58. So that is our board. Thank you. Thank you, board members. I would be remiss if I did not mention the loss of our longtime board member, Susan Mayhem, class of 76. Many knew her from, um, well, being one of the original twirlers on the cheering squad, but also for the work uh, she did establishing the Ruby Engineers, aptly named Rubies, acknowledging the first 40 years of women at Brooklyn Tech. So maybe this year's homecoming being held in the month of March, Women's History Month, has a special meaning because we do miss Sue. Yeah. As Janine mentioned, we had an amazing centennial gala in November of last year. It was absolutely show-stopping. Um, there we announced the beginning of our centennial year at homecoming last year. And since this is the centennial school year, it continues all the way until the end of June. The Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation is deeply committed to ensuring the incredible educational institution remains a beacon of excellence for the next 100 years and way beyond. Last year, we announced that we were kicking off a $20 million centennial campaign to support and transform labs, educational programs, and infrastructure. We've received many generous gifts, we thank you, and among those gifts, I'm proud to tell you that the Centennial Commissioner, Leonard Riggio, and founder of Barnes & Nobles pledged $1 million. He did. Over the years, the Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation has raised tens of millions of dollars for essential labs, facilities, and educational initiatives that make tech a national STEM leader. The Reston Research Scholars Program, the Jeffrey Heitken Faculty Grants Program, the John A. Cavanaugh Materials Testing Lab, the Charles B. Wang Athletic Fields, these are only a few. Libraries are cherished and essential space in our city and in our nation. The library here at Tech is no exception. We are so proud to present a student-produced video with Eason Fan, he's class of 2025, and Alexa Kellerman, class of 2023, at the helm. That is being shown in the fifth floor library, so be sure to check it out. It will bring back some wonderful memories, I assure you, and get you up to date on how the library continues to grow and change in these times. And speaking of library, here's one for the books. <laughs> Last year, I mentioned the publication of Engineered for Excellence was in the works. Well, I'm happy to report that volume one is complete and available. It's beautifully done and an absolute treasure. The full title of the book is Engineered for Excellence, Notable Brooklyn Tech High School Alumni Who Helped Change the World. Volume one, the first 50 years, 1922 to 1972. Tech, accompli Tech Night accomplishments cover diverse fields, military, medical, academia, entertainment, sports, science, business, and arts. These books are available for sale upstairs with our merchandise. They're $100 and worth every penny. It's, it's really a very nice publication. We have to thank our New Jersey alumni group for spearheading the efforts, um, and Achilles Perry, class of 58, who generously did some contributions to make it possible, and a shout out to Bob Campernato and Gary Fox for all of their hard work. <laughs> Along with all of our great successes, there was a great loss. Um, a beloved leader, mentor, and coach passed 
just days after the Centennial Gala, where she could not be present but was awarded a Lifetime Achievement Award. What I will tell you is that Miss Ski did get to see it. She is with us now in spirit as the school was her workplace. This was her home, her holy place. We have a beautiful tribute to her on display in the cafeteria. And on May 6th at 3 p.m., everyone is invited to come celebrate her life and legacy right here at Brooklyn Tech. Right now, let's take a moment to watch this amazing woman speak about the school and this foundation. Here is a moment with Miss Elizabeth Schiabara. We look at where we've been um, very, very prominent in helping the school realize certain goals. And it's because we've been able to cultivate an alumni foundation that we have taken steps to also work with alumni engagement to make sure that we utilize the expertise out there. We want to make sure that our students have a robust learning experience and where the Department of Ed cannot fund certain professional development opportunities for teachers or certain supplies or machinery or anything that is required in certain majors the Alumni Foundation certainly can step in and help realize that dream. We all loved Miss Ski, and I remember fondly working on the stage rehearsing for musical plays, and she was out in the hallways with the cheerleaders <laughs> practicing out there. Now here's another celebrated affinity group of tech led by coaches Ramona Richardson and Pierre McNeil. Let's give a warm welcome, which didn't exist when we were here, steppers, to our acclaimed, award-winning Brooklyn Tech step teams, organized chaos and Lady Dragons.
that you ever did see. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad to make this next introduction. The Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation, as Denise mentioned, just celebrated its 40th anniversary. And new leadership is part of how we drive forward and upward to meet today's challenges. Here to lead the remainder of today's ceremonies is the new Executive Director of the Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation. From the class of 1990, please welcome Courtney J. Ulrich. Thank you, Janine. Good morning, Tech Nights. It's truly a homecoming for me in so many ways. Walking these halls again is mind-blowing. It's a mind-blowing experience. I feel incredibly privileged to be reconnected with tech in this capacity. It fills me with tremendous pride. Let's face it, Tech Knights are an outrageously proud bunch. Determined, strong, tenacious. We figure things out and get things done. Regardless of our choice of major, this is where we learned critical thinking and problem-solving skills. I'm honored to come full circle and use my skills here at the Alumni Foundation. 
So you've seen around the school and all over downtown Brooklyn our Centennial logo. So many wonderful things have happened since we introduced this logo last year. Denise has named a few amazing things that have occurred in conjunction with our Centennial and in years past. Well, alumni made those things possible. You make it happen. Your ideas and passion drive us. You are the innovators who make dreams a reality. We come from this incredible school, which gave us the tools to achieve, work within and build our communities and do transformational things. And we are here, crazy loyal to this school, right? So why do we come back? Why do we stay connected? Why do our hearts leap a bit wherever and whenever we need a tech night in our travels from any generation, class, or major? Because we have a deeply soulful connection to this place and what we achieved here together. So why not make that connection even more tangible? Support our Alumni Foundation. It's not about writing a check. I mean, it is, but it isn't. <laughs> It's about service to future generations, to keeping that pride alive. Look around as you tour the halls today. Alumni have served this school in so many extraordinary ways. Today, I'm asking you to do three simple things. Connect, get involved, and give back. Connect to each other and the foundation. Make sure we have your email address. On our website, there's a link to update anytime you move or change anything um, so that we can get your updated contact information. With your email, you'll get our recently relaunched digital newsletter, The Tech Night. You can also leave an alumni note to tell us what you've been up to. And my women Tech Nights out there, I'm looking at all of you specifically because we have a lot of responses from men, so we need to hear from you. In January, we relaunched Recent Alumni Day. That's an event for young alums, a great opportunity to get involved. We had close to 400 young alums back to tech to talk to our students about their college experience. It was an amazing day. And this fall, we will be bringing back Career Day, yet another way to give back. Find out how your skills today fit the school's needs for tomorrow. So sure, if you want to write a check or text BTHS 2023 to 44321, you can see it up here on the screen, to donate toward your class gift, we'll put your money to work. But please consider giving of your time, ideas, and expertise. It all matters and it all counts. Connect, get involved, give back. Simple. Okay, now let's get to those classes celebrating an anniversary. Tech Nights, it's time to induct our 50th anniversary class into the Diamond Club. Please welcome our homecoming chair, Tom Hernandez, and founding member of the Diamond Club from the class of 1961, Frank Lush, who's seated in the front row. Before I begin, I'm going to go off script just for 90 seconds. The class of 73 was the last all-male graduating class. And with that, amazing change was made, historic change was made in September of 1970 when the first two women walked through the doors of tech. And I think that's something we need to celebrate. Getting back on script, I am thrilled to, <laughs> to welcome you all back inside these hallowed grounds. Every single person here, regardless of their class year or decade, is thinking the same thing. Time flies. 
It is with great pride and accomplishment that I stand here representing the class of 1973. And with that, we're about to be inducted into the special group, the Diamond Club. And my dear friend, Frank Lutz, will do the honors. Take it away, Frank. What a pleasure it is to be back here. Uh, this is where my roots were, where I graduated in 1961. One of the few guys in my class from Staten Island. Out. Hour and a half trip each way, three hours a day. Uh, of course, we studied the entire time. Uh, I never sat this close when I was a student, by the way, to the stage. What is, uh, what is the Diamond Club? We found that uh, alumni, once they celebrate their 50th anniversary, uh, they drift away. Uh, and our purpose of our club is to try to keep them, keep them together, have them talking, uh, maintain the relationship with the school, but more importantly, uh, try to increase the relationships between our alumni. There's a lot of us out there. Um, three of our founding members of the Diamond Club, Mike Weiss, uh, Achilles Perry, and Mark Mandry, uh, also, as he mentioned before, founded the Alumni Association in the 80s. Uh, we hope we can be as successful with the uh, Diamond Club. Um, what's the purpose of this year's primary objectives? Um, what we're trying to do is form alumni groups throughout the country uh, who can get together even if it's just for lunch every couple of months. Uh, we have three groups already. We have one in Connecticut, which I founded, uh, one in Jersey, one in Long Island, and one being formed right now in Washington, D.C., which is going very well, uh, being formed by Mike Weiss, who was known as uh, Myron Levy when he was at Tech. Um, if you're interested in becoming a, a lead representative to organize a group in your area, uh, contact me or anybody on the board, and we'll help you get started with contacts, et cetera. Uh, uh, we meet in Connecticut every three months. Uh, we have lunch. We have a good old time. We swap war, war stories. We solve problems. We all seem to have the same problems. Uh, and it's a, a worthwhile experience, and we all look forward to it. Uh, my pleasure tonight as the founding uh, member of the alumni of the Diamond Club is to uh, welcome an entire class. Tom, I'd like to induct you and the rest of the class of 1973 into the Diamond Club. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Class, why don't we stand? Thank you. And now, give it up for the principal of Brooklyn Technical High School, David Newman. Good morning. I have the honor of welcoming you as principal of Brooklyn Technical High School. Brooklyn Tech has been my home for the past 24 years as a teacher, head of health and safety, assistant principal of supervision, and for the past six years as principal. I love welcoming back so many dedicated alumni year after year. As was just mentioned, we are in the midst of celebrating a legacy of 100 years of unrivaled and heralded excellence. It is my honor to serve as principal of the greatest high school in the nation.
Brooklyn Tech is also the largest high school in the United States with 6,000 students from every neighborhood and zip code throughout New York City. Here are a few things about tech today. Brooklyn Tech has been a gold medal high school in U.S. News and World Report since the publication began ranking high schools. We have been ranked in the top 50 high schools in the nation for the last three years running. In the niche high school rankings, which lists schools that serve a population of over 50% free lunch, for the third year in a row, we were ranked in the top three in the nation. Tech has the largest college credit bearing AP program in the world. And as you know, Brooklyn Tech grads are accepted into the most prestigious colleges and universities. Last year, our graduates topped for the first time $158 million in total scholarships offered. Tech started with six majors in architecture, chemical engineering, college prep, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, and structural engineering. Although many of these majors still exist, we've expanded our majors to equip our students with the skills that they need today to be the leaders of industry tomorrow. Currently, we have 18 majors. They are advanced health professions, aerospace engineering, architectural engineering, biological sciences, chemical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, environmental science, finance, our, US, our newest major in collaboration with Long Island University, which is a pharmacy pipeline program culminating in a doctorate of pharmacy from LIU called LIU PharmD. We have industrial design, law and society, applied mathematics, mechatronics and robotics, digital media, physics, social science, and software engineering. Many of you, when you went here, took technical drawing. Now, all freshmen take DDP, drafting for production, which includes, uh, introduces students to design process from brainstorming through actual prototyping through 3D printing. It includes elements of technical drawing blended with computer-assisted drafting through Autodesk Inventor, which students may receive industry-grade certification as well as college credit for the course. All sophomores take advanced placement computer science principles, which challenge students to explore how computing and technology can impact the world with a focus on creative problem solving and real world problems. This year, we already have five city PSAL championships. Those are in boys cross country, girls soccer, girls swimming, boys table tennis, and boys swimming by defeating Stuyvesant in the finals. <laughs> As a side note, Stuyvesant has no CD championships this year. To put this in perspective, there are 42 PSAL Total City Championships, and with a full season to go, even if we won no more city championships this year, Brooklyn Tech, one school, has 12% of all the city championships in sports this year. The Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation has raised tens of millions of dollars for labs and educational initiatives. The Heller Computer Integrated Manufacturing Robotics Lab, the Con Ed Environmental Science Lab, and the Greenhouse are examples of this notion. And with your support, there are new programs in the pipeline to keep tech receiving international notoriety. We are poised to continue our leadership status for the next 100 years. Jediah Thomas, student body president and class of 2023, was supposed to be here to address you, but had an unexpected dental surgery today that he needed to attend to. At the Brooklyn Tech Gala in November, Jediah addressed the audience and received an enthusiastic standing ovation. Jediah says, the abundance of resources and opportunities have allowed my peers and me to pave our own path through this school and develop our ability to seize opportunities in order to reach our ambitions. It's not the opportunities or the network that define tech, it's the environment that develops tech knights who seize opportunities and combat challenges of society head on. 
I am, my peers are, and all of us are a testament to this. By breaking past the limits of yesterday, we create room for tomorrow. Thank you, Jediah. Thank you for all you do, alums, for our school, our reputation, and Aztec Knights. Now, I'd like to introduce the class years. I need some cheerleaders. Janice, you were a cheerleader. Come on up and help me. I surely was not. Tom, New Diamond Club member, please come up and join me. Bola, your cheerleader from last year. Bola, come on. Where are the pom-poms? You had them last year. All right. We could I can, we could do something. <laughs> what was that? I don't have any pom poms. So you I need pom poms. No, Tom. no, I don't. Tom, you, you can. Okay. Can I hear from our Diamond Club members the 1930s through 1972? Lights. Lights. You want, you want, what kind of lights you want? You, can we turn up the house lights, please? You'd see people cheering, maybe? All right, if we can get the house lights on, we'd appreciate it. Now, for the 1970s, including our golden anniversary class of 1973. All right. and the 45th anniversary class of 1978. Watch out, here it comes. Let's hear for the 1980s. Including the 40th anniversary class of 1983. And the 35th anniversary class of 1988. All right, let's see if we can top them, the 1990s classes. That includes the 30th anniversary class of 1993. and our 25th anniversary class of 1998. Now the 2000s, let's hear for all of you. The that includes the anniversary class of 2003. The 15th anniversary class of 2008. <laughs> and the 10th anniversary class of 2013. And the 5th anniversary class of 2018. And finally, let's recognize 2023. Not alums yet, but on the cusp. In addition, friends, we want a special welcome to Pazel Jackson, who is here from the class of 1949. Pazel, please wave. Where are you? Please wave. Thank you for attending. One of the top songs of 1973 was Billy Preston's Will It Go Round in Circles. So let's zoom through the decades with this quick video of tech.
I think we're gonna rerun that. Um, <laughs> Brooklyn Technical High School, just saying. I will, are they gonna start right now? Yeah, it's backup. Okay, backup. do they know that? Yeah. The backup people? <laughs> 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 time to acknowledge a team of terrific leaders. We've got to thank the class reps for their volunteerism in keeping the school spirit alive with their class, organizing and planning those individual class reunion events, and for their collective promotion of the Centennial Homecoming Weekend. Class reps, please stand and let's give them a round of applause. We have the lights up a little bit. Thank you, class reps. And now, let's get an educational update. It's my pleasure to introduce an alum of the class of 1961, my former principal of tech, a founder of the Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation, our foundation's chief education officer, and I like to call him my MVP, Matthew Mandry. <laughs> Thank you, and thank you, Courtney. Welcome back to the little brick schoolhouse that Albin Colston built. Welcome home. Just think, 
Thank you. And you can applaud anytime you like. In fact, I appreciate it because I get my energy from you. So just think about, thank you. Just think about how visionary a leader Dr. Colston was to create a high school that embodied the concept of STEM before the acronym was, had ever been used. When you tour the school today, I'd like you to take the time to spend some time in a center lobby to look at the mural that shows the creation of knowledge from physical, to mental from physical and mental labor. And then look at the fireplace beneath the image of the painting of the thinker and read the words written on it. Mathematics, science, technology. The only thing missing was the vowel E. Realize he imagined that mural and this concept in 1932 when this building opened. Truly remarkable. As alumni, we are the beneficiary, beneficiaries of this great institution that Albert Colston opened 100 years ago in 1922. What we know as Brooklyn Tech alumni is that there is no high school environment that equals what we were fortunate to experience. As tech students, we do not just learn about things, we put those ideas into action. Yes. And in back in 1983, when we created the Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation, we had our first homecoming in the spring of 1984. During our virtual homecoming two years ago, our wonderful host was Janine Ramirez. We give it to Janine. And she noted, tech alumni are inspiring, unique, creative, and innovative. To honor those characteristics from the very start, we created a homecoming that is different from a typical high school homecoming that features a football game. Now, incidentally, you should mark your calendar because in the fall, we do have a football homecoming game and we'd love to have you there. But we created a homecoming that featured Brooklyn Tech's programs, faculty, and students. And that tradition continues today. In 1998, our foundation created Care Tech the commitment to assess and revise the education at Tech. This formed a strategic partner with our alma mater. We wanted to make a big impact and modernize Tech programs, facilities, and support professional development opportunities for the faculty. As you tour Tech today, much of what you will see is a result of that ongoing effort. One of the exciting programs that we developed is our Future World Vision STEM Pathways Project. This program, led by our foundation, unites the American Society of Civil Engineers, ASCE, with one of the largest, which is one of the largest professional organizations with Brooklyn Tech, the largest STEM high school in our country, and seven middle schools. This initiative serves a little over 3,000 students, many of whom are African American and Latinx. The project prayers Brooklyn Tech with professional organizations, colleges, and universities to ensure that our programs are current. We work with the middle schools to strengthen their STEM programs and give their students greater access to Brooklyn Tech and other STEM high school programs. This becomes a model that can be replicated by other high schools across our nation. As you tour Tech today, you will have the opportunity to meet and interact with the finest faculty and students in our country. Our faculty are key to keeping Tech great. Think back, and you will recall the teachers who made a difference in your life. I ask our, our former and current faculty to please rise for a moment. Please stand so that we can give you so that we can give you the recognition that you so deserve. We thank you. We thank you for all that you do to ensure our students receive a world-class education. In today's program, there's a list of the rooms that you can visit. You will be able to see firsthand the great things that are happening at Tech. They are happening because of the support of our alumni, the support that our alumni has given. 
I want to ask Dean Fong, class of 1968, to please stand up. <laughs> Dean is one of five children, and three of his siblings attended Tech. His older sister did not attend Tech because Tech did not accept women at that time. We've corrected that. Dean and his wife, Linda, created a fund to support Tech students as a tribute to honoring his mother. Education was extremely important to Dean's mother, and she encouraged her children to pursue it to their fullest. The fund will support students researching in architecture, engineering, business, and medical science. Dean, we thank you for this very special gift. Brooklyn Tech's legacy of excellence has been shaped by our alumni accomplishments and support of our alma mater. We thank you for helping us make this journey possible. We are, uh, we are like no other high school. And there's other two high schools in this city that know that full well. They don't have the love for their, well, I shouldn't say that. Our love for this institution surpasses anything, anywhere else, anyhow, anyway. <laughs> Tech today is a shining example of what STEM education can be. Thank you for being here. Enjoy our centennial homecoming. Thank you again. Please welcome back Courtney. Thank you, Matt. I want to give a special shout out to our wonderful Janine Ramirez. Janine, thank you. Thank you for being here on stage with us. Also a shout out to our assistant principal of visual and performing arts, Gus Trombetta, Edwin Velasquez, director of the Spring Musical and my classmate from 1990, music director Deshaun Withers, class of 2000, Chorus director, Basha Revy, jazz band teacher. Um, technical director, Sid Isaacson. Our lead, COSA, Christina Massey. And our lighting designer, Ron McIntyre, for helping make so much of today possible. It really takes a village. We also want to send a special thank you to assistant principal, Jennifer Sullivan and our deep appreciation for our faculty and students who volunteered to be here today. And f yes, round of applause. And finally, a very, very special thanks to the rest of our hardworking Brooklyn Tech Alumni Foundation staff. Please stand and wave. I don't know if we can have some house lights. If they're here, they might also be running around working. Our very own Michelle Corley, Director of Alumni Engagement. <laughs> Michelle works so closely with so many of you to make this weekend a success. Lisa Trollbach, our Director of Communications. I can't see if they're in the room. Okay, Leticia Villalon Soler, Director of Data Analytics. Anyone that asked for a list, it came from Leticia. <laughs> Marcel Von Handy, our Chief Development Officer, and our newest team member, Yurani Prasad, our Administrative Assistant. Thank you all for being an incredible team. And now, for a really special moment, I know you all love participating in the alma mater. When they assemble on stage, we welcome you to stand and sing along. The lyrics will be up on the screen. Please welcome the Brooklyn Tech Chorus.
Aren't our students incredibly talented? I want to thank all of our student performers. There'll be special performances by the jazz band in the lobby in the center section, and string instrumentalists will be up in the cafeteria. Friends, before I dismiss you, I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> I have some instructions for the remainder of the day. Lunch will be served in the seventh floor cafeteria in waves, beginning with the classes of the 90s, the aughts, and the tens, immediately after the auditorium program. At 1245, members of the Diamond Club and classes of the 70s, and at 115, classes of the 80s. Don't worry, we aren't kicking you out of the cafeteria. This is just for some line control. Remember when we lined up for the elevators in the basement? Kind of like that. The schedule for class photos in the first floor gym can be found in your program. It begins with the Alumni Foundation Board of Directors immediately after the auditorium program, followed by 1250 the Diamond Club, and at 1 o'clock the class of 73, and so on. So check the times and listen for announcements. Of course, you can take a self-guided tour of the school by the following, you know, by following the signs. You'll see all of that and what's available to you in today's program from the greenhouse and the gym on the eighth floor down to the courtroom in the basement. Don't miss it. New this year, we've scheduled affinity group meetups and photo ops. For those of you who were part of a tech publication, like the survey, Blueprint, Horizon, and I know there were others, or if you played football or were in chorus, meet in the library at 12.30 p.m. Debo, that includes you. Track team and cheerleaders, meet in the eighth floor gym at 1.45. Swim team, meet at the pool at 2.15. If you were a member of one of the Divine Nine, meet in the first floor gym at 2.45. All of this is in your program. Also new this year, there will be two special fireside chats in the library. You don't want to miss them. At 1 o'clock, Debo, also known as Jim DiBenedetto, class of 1971, will be talking about sports clubs and the performing arts. And at 1.30, Yasmin Blackburn Esquire, class of 1970, excuse me, class of 1993, uh, we'll be with the debate team discussing immigration law. Just remember the library is on the fifth floor center section and you can access from the west side of the building. So, connect, get involved, give back, and go enjoy. Thank you.